What's up guys, my name's Brandon and Apple just released iOS 16 beta 5 to register developers a little less than two weeks after the previous beta release. And this one should be out for public beta testers very soon. Now, in addition to this iOS release, Apple also released iPadOS 16 beta 5, watchOS 9 beta 5, macOS Ventura beta 5, tvOS 16 beta 5, and HomePod OS 16 beta 5. But of course, as always, this video is all about iOS and iPadOS 16 beta 5. And as you guys can see, first off, Apple didn't actually say beta 5 in the update screen right here. So when we got the software update, it only said 16.0. Didn't even say iOS, didn't say beta 5 anywhere. So seems like a little minor mistake on Apple's end that never ended up getting resolved. Maybe that will be resolved when it comes out for public beta testers, but we'll have to wait and see. But anyways, you guys can see the size of this update here. It's 1.34 gigabytes on my iPhone 13 Pro Max. That size will vary depending on your device and the version you're coming from. That of course is coming from beta four. So let's go and check out the build number, settings general about. We can see the build number here for this fifth beta is 20A. 5339D. So we do have a D at the end of the build number, which indicates we have a few more betas to go, but we're definitely on our way. I would say we're getting pretty close to the midway point if we're not already past the midway point for these beta releases. So that's good to see. Also, if we scroll down to the modem firmware, you can see the modem firmware is 2.09.01. So it has been updated for the 13 series. All right, so now what's new here in iOS 16 beta five? And you may think that all of the big new features got announced at the Worldwide Developers Conference and got released within the first couple of betas, but you'd be wrong because we just got a big new feature in beta five. And if we go into our settings here and then go down to battery, you will see that we have a new toggle up here for battery percentage. And when you tap on that, take a look at my status bar here. We finally have the battery percentage in the status bar for notched devices. Now this is not going to work for many devices for whatever reason, at least not now, but you could see that we now have the battery percentage up there in our status bar inside of the battery icon. This is a feature we've been waiting on for a very long time. I think ever since the iPhone 10 got released back in 2017, everybody has been wanting the battery percentage to be up in the status bar and now it has finally happened. So it shows also when you're charging, it shows the battery percentage right there. And of course, when you're not charging as well. So glad to see Apple finally adding this. We also have another pretty cool feature here in beta five. So if we start playing our music and we go to our lock screen or our notification center here, take a look at the now playing platter. Do you notice anything new? We have this new waveform over here to the right of the song title. And it's not just random. It's not just moving randomly. It actually goes to the beat. And when you pause, you can see it pauses right away. And if you listen to the music, you will hear that that waveform goes to the beat of the song, which is pretty cool. And also you will notice that we have new animations when pressing on these playback controls. So look closely, you will see that we get a new animation every time we press next or back or play and pause. You can see a slight new animation there. Looks a lot more fluid, just makes the device feel I don't know, feel faster, feel more like you're actually controlling the music. I don't know how to describe it, but I love these new animations here in beta five. And if we go into the music application, if we go to one of the albums or like a single, you will notice that now up top next to the genre and the release date that we now have our Dolby Atmos and our lossless information. So that used to be down lower. Now it's in line with the genre and the release date. And then I have to mention this because it was such an issue for people on the previous beta, but the volume indicator lag has been fixed here in beta five. So if you had any issue with the volume indicator over here, the volume HUD just lagging and glitching all over the place that has been fixed here in beta five. I've tried several times to make it lag and just have issues and spaz out, but it's not doing it so volume indicator bug finally fixed when you take a screenshot in beta 5 and you tap on the done button you will notice that we now have a new option for copy and delete so if you just needed a screenshot to copy and send to somebody real quick and you'll never need it again you can now copy and delete that a nice new option now if we head back into our settings here and go down to Siri and search you will notice that we have a new section here for before searching. So before it would just say content from Apple and suggestions from Apple, but now we have a whole new section here 
for before searching. So now you get the option to show suggestions and show recents before searching from the spotlight search. So when you swipe down like that, you can you know remove these if you want to with this new indicator here that shows before searching. So for example, if I turned off show suggestions and then I swipe down, you can see that they disappear. And then also my recents aren't showing, but if they did, those would also be gone when swiping down and starting to search for something. Now also, if we go into our wallpaper section right here and go to customize our current wallpaper and then go to photos right here, you will notice that the add widget text what that was there in beta four up in the top left has now been removed. So that was a bug and it has been resolved here in beta five. It no longer shows up there. And then something else I just noticed is that perspective zoom appears to be gone in this beta. So I tried it on the lock screen and I tried it here for my home screen wallpaper. And it seems like perspective zoom has been removed and now it only shows the depth effect. And just a very minor thing I noticed here in beta five, if you go to add a clock widget to your lock screen, you will see that city analog now is spelled correctly so for whatever reason before it was spelled with a ue after it maybe that's the correct spelling somewhere else but city analog the correct spelling is now fixed here in beta 5. also the automations alert has finally been fixed so before it had a grammatical error it said one automation are enabled on your iphone and now finally after five betas it has been resolved to now say one automation is enabled on your iPhone. This update also brings multiple new splash screens, four to be exact. So here's the new splash screen for photos. It talks about shared library, copy and paste edits, and merge duplicates. Then we have one for the Maps application where it talks about multi-stop routing, transit cards, and landmarks. Then we have one for the Find My application that talks about findable when powered off, the Find My network for AirPods, and a refreshed map. And then finally, one for the home application where it talks about new home categories, your home at a glance, control your home with a tap and multi-camera view. And if we take a look at the release notes for beta five, they're definitely not as interesting as the beta four release notes, because of course, beta four did fix a ton of bugs, the most so far in iOS 16, but beta five, you know, introduces some new known issues. It does resolve quite a few issues as well, but not near as many as we saw in beta four, really kind of a boring set of release notes in my opinion, but we do have some issues resolved like in wallpapers for the lock screen and things like that. But that's about where it ends right there. Now, as far as bugs and overall performance goes so far, beta five feels really good, especially since we have a fix for the volume HUD bug right here that would just be really janky and really laggy in beta four. Now that that's fixed, you know, and some of the crashing issues appear to be fixed as well. And just some of the minor UI bugs have been addressed. It doesn't seem like we're going to have too many issues here on beta five like we did on beta four. Now, don't get me wrong. Performance is great on beta four, but there were quite a few UI bugs that impacted performance, you know, for most people. So in my opinion, beta five definitely going to be a nice improvement over beta four because of the resolution of those issues. Now, also, if we check out the Geekbench scores here for beta five, I did score a 1735 on the single core and a staggering 4812 on the multi core. So the single core is not anything special. It's actually slightly lower than previous builds, but 4812 is the highest multi core I've had yet on iOS 16. And if we go back and look at the history here, you can see the history of the beta builds right here. And I ran the same test at the same time, you know, for all of these. Now, as far as battery life goes, I don't have to pull down to see the battery percentage anymore. I love that. But as far as the battery life goes, it's too early to tell if battery life is going to be better or worse here in beta five. I would expect it to be a little bit better, especially since we don't have as many UI bugs and probably not going to have as many crashes either. I would expect battery life to be better on beta five. But for me personally, beta four greatly improved the battery life. So I don't expect it to be, you know, as big of an increase as it was from beta three to beta four, but we should still see a nice improvement to battery life here in beta five. And I think it's going to be, you know, gradually better leading up to the final release next month. All right, so now let's move on to what to expect next from Apple. So today is Monday, August 8th. So Apple does usually shy away from those Monday releases for betas, but for whatever reason, they did release that beta today. So I would expect the next beta, beta six, to come one week after today. So we've been on a two week cycle for a while now, but I think Apple is going to switch over to a weekly release schedule now. And the reason I say that is just based on history. Usually 
Apple switches over to a weekly release schedule after beta five. So from beta five to beta six, and then thereafter up until the RC, and then it may go a couple of weeks before the final. But anyways, we should see beta six next week on the week of the 15th. Now it could come on the 15th, anywhere from the 15th through the 17th. Normally I would say the 16th or the 17th, but Apple did release this beta on a Monday. So Monday is possible next week as well. So we should see beta six, then maybe beta seven, beta eight, and then we might see the RC on the fifth with a final on the 12th, or we could see an RC in two weeks between the RC and the final, and maybe getting the final on the week of the 19th. It's hard to say right now, we are waiting for Apple to announce the release date for iOS 16 so we can know when it is official. And then as far as iOS 15 goes, if you are still on iOS 15, we could be seeing an iOS 15.7 beta one or an iOS 15.6.1, a final release sometime soon. So I'm not sure if we're gonna see another beta for iOS 15, like a 15.7, it's possible, but we'll have to wait and see. I would expect something to get released before the end of August though. So yeah, guys, there you have it. That is iOS 16 beta five, a pretty major update in terms of features. There's not a ton of new features, but there are some pretty big ones like the battery percentage, the EQ on the screen right here, the animations on the now playing screen, some nice new additions here, especially for a fifth beta so i hope you guys enjoyed this video if you did i would appreciate if you gave it a thumbs up also make sure to subscribe for a lot more ios 16 coverage in the near future and the extended future as well i'll be covering ios 16 for a long time until ios 17 comes out but anyways guys thanks again for watching and i'll see you soon